black stone. We're going to start with our first stone. And uh, Dad, you have the um, chipping tool here. And what I'm doing is I'm adjusting the joint so it is fairly even next to the house. As you can see, the chipping tool does just that. It takes little bites out of the stone so I get a even joint here. I'll take the pieces out of here. And that and way we can have a I can slide nice the stone. Joint. Uh, tap the stone on the end there, David. So now I'm going to tap it over. Tap it against the house. So right there you can see we have a nice joint for that. From this point on we'll get another stone. We'll get this out of the way. I'll bring this stone here, and as you can see, this is straight on one side, and I'm going to put that up against the house here. I'll slide it back a little. I have an even join against the house now. Then I take a marker okay. and mark it along here. So it fits next to the stone, and at the same time when I make my cut, I'll take this unevenness out of the stone, so the following stone will fit in here smoothly. Now, um, speaking of this joint going up against the house, sometimes you advise clients to, and that's the only joint you do that with, is to have caulking back there sometimes. Have an expansion joint there. Because sometimes the, the patio will like to expand away from the house. Just wanted to throw that little quick note in. Um, now... When we do these irregulars, we our goal is to just get one side that matches so we can avoid some cutting. Is that right? Exactly. You try to get as many sides to fit as possible. Generally, if you get two sides to fit, you're doing rather well. But, you, but most of the time it ends up being one. So like with the second stone, it had a straight edge that went against the house. So we put that straight edge up knowing we're going to have to be cutting on two other sides, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So we'll, uh, we'll show the continuation as we go along. Okay. We'll go ahead now and cut this stone with a demo saw. Now we're going to cut this with a demo saw, and you'll get a chance with to see what's going on. We have two sides cut. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on so that you can see it. We cut this edge down over there on that side right there, and then we cut this edge here. So we have two cuts, and you can see that we now have a nice natural joint between the first stone and the second stone. We got the two sides cut in on that second stone. Now we have a third stone coming in. It is a, a triangle. Um, why did you pick that stone out, Dan? It fits into this pocket fairly well. All I have to do is mark this over here, cut this corner off with a demo saw, or with a chisel, whichever, and then for the most part the stone fits nicely into this pocket. So we, you basically got a small cut out of a big stone by just fitting in the right piece in the right place. Almost. Exactly. This is what you want to do while you still have lots of choices. Later on, you may not have the choice, and you have to use the material that's left. And uh, one other thing I just want to point out. We made some dust and some rocks on the pad here. Um, we're going to make sure to sweep that off because underneath, it's very important to have a clean concrete surface so exactly. that uh, the concrete, when it goes under the stone, sticks better and stuff. Also, under a sand patio, you, would also, you wouldn't want all these pieces and dust under that as well. Exactly. Notes on uh, when they do cut with a demo saw, um, what should they, uh, where can they cut? And Well, basically, if you're cutting on a grassy area, to stop the hot exhaust of the demo saw burning your grass, perhaps you want a little old piece of plywood to do your cutting on. If, like we're doing here for the most part, we're cutting on existing patio, it is not so critical. You can do that as long as you don't cut too deep into the... Uh, old concrete here. Okay, and also um, um, when you do set it on the uh, on the mortar board or on the plywood, that's because the exhaust 
will get to the grass when it's running, and it can kill the grass. Exactly. But when they do cut in the grass, they can actually cut a little bit in the grass. We've done that a lot. Cut the grass, and the grass goes right back, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it is almost like aerating the grass. It's You don't have to worry about it, it not growing back. But obviously, you don't want to do too much of that. Okay, let's observe uh, a couple more times. They don't always have to cut completely through. They can cut, no. what, about three-quarters through? Uh, either half or three-quarters, and then tap it with a hammer, and that works just fine. And that way they can avoid some time on cutting with that. Exactly. And uh, what you want to do, the pieces that you cut off, the triangular shapes or whatever shape they are, save them to the very last because there will be some areas where you can still use those triangular cuts. Here we have our fourth piece. Um, you're kind of kicking around a little bit. What do you like about this one? I'm trying to uh, follow these two sides, and it looks like other than taking the chisel and cutting a little bit off here, all I have to do is cut the outer edge, and then the stone fits very nicely into this particular area. Now, at one point with, when you cut the outer edge, it's okay for us to cut it there because it won't show, right? Normally, you want to leave Latin, you want to leave natural edges. Even after I cut it with a saw, I will put with a chipping chisel. I will put a natural edge on there. Oh, okay. So. When we cut that outside piece, see, he'll use the... I'll, I'll cut it about a half inch bigger. As you can see, I'll take this out of the way. I will cut roughly along there so it meets up with this stone. I will cut that with a saw, and then I will chip with a chipping chisel to make it and give it a rough surface. That's the pitching chisel, right? That's the pitching chisel and then it has a natural edge to it and not a saw cut edge. Because we've been on many jobs where so-called professionals have actually used a saw cut that's shown on the outside and that's just completely unnatural, doesn't yes. look good, does it? Exactly. Okay, so now you're going to see how um, we, we just cut one edge, you see how the piece fits in there and the joint over here still looks natural, that's what's nice about this irregular flagstone is that it can be kind of bent joints and the concrete, when it gets filled in, it looks really nice and really natural and stuff. So, Dad is going to cut. So it's easier to chip with, and also to see. He's going to take the pitching chisel or the chipping chisel, and he's going to come by, and he'll just chip it out, just lightly along. Now, how are you uh, tapping that? Well, what would you recommend? Uh, I tap it very lightly. Okay. And uh, I hit it first from one side, then I will take the stone, turn it over, and hit it from the other side, because if you get too much of a bite. You have a tendency to undercut the stone. Okay. Now, how do you angle that chisel? Let's take a look to see how you angle the chisel. I'll hold it fairly straight with a slight angle toward me. Okay. If you take it and you turn it too far the other way, you will undercut this whole edge and take out a big chunk on the bottom. So by doing it the way you're doing it now, you can avoid taking out too much. Exactly, and still get the job done. As you can see, the natural edge is now appearing with chiseling this. And you see, we're the taking... only thing you have to watch is your ends, because sometimes the stone will will chip on you in the outer part. As you can see, there's a little bit of cut edge left. I'll try and rough this out to a point where it looks natural. 
You have to be careful not to split out the very end. There. Mm. Now we have the natural so edge. It. There. Now when you look at this edge, it looks like it was quarry. It was meant to come out of the quarry. Now we'll take the stone and lay it in here. And as you can see, it fits pretty nicely. And we have a nice edge there all the way around. You have it on all three sides. A nice edge. So I'll take this little tip off yet, and this one here, and then it matches each other a little better. And everything matches up. So this is really basically nicely. the way you need, you need to follow through, fitting these pieces in as you go. Okay. We'll do one more, and then uh, we'll come back to you at the uh, middle of the project. If you want to cut a stone in half, you take this straight cutting chisel that I have here, and you begin tapping lightly along this stone, not too forcefully, because all you want to do is cut the stone in half. So in order to achieve that... These are for people that don't want to rent a demo saw. Maybe they have a, a small pad that they want to save some money. They can get a straight chisel, and then they just pound it like you do, how hard are you hitting it there? Medium. Uh, you don't want to force things. You want to make sure that you are in the middle of the stone where you hit it more often than the outside. Okay. The outside usually has a tendency to break first. So you go back and forth on your cut here. And as you can see, now the stone is cut in half. And now we have a nice, fairly straight edge, and we did that without even having to use the saw. Exactly. And that's generally we use the straight edge chisel, chisel for, in case you you know want to save some money and don't want to rent a saw. The whole okay. thing depends on how well you have it compacted, and you need to make sure with sand, just like with concrete, that you have an even surface underneath the stone so it doesn't rock while you're okay. stepping on. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's do another cut here, and let's just get a demonstration over here. here. That kind of curves next to these two other stone. Um, what else do you like about this stone? Well, I like a variety. Plus, it breaks up this this joint over here. So what I will do is I will mark these two stones. Uh huh. And mark them here, and I will cut this in to the curve here. For the most part, triangular and curved stones always look nice on a patio. So you're doing that more for aesthetics exactly. rather than practicality. So it, so it looks interesting. That, and you don't want a continuous running joint for more than two or three stones. So by laying this crossways to these, I break up this joint here. So sometimes... You're not going to cut the stone you're just laying down. You have to backtrack and cut exactly. the stone before there in order to make it look better. And it actually comes out and makes it pretty easy because exactly. those two stones have, don't have too big of a cuts, do they? No, they do not. And then in this area, I will use one of the triangles that I know I will have left over from all this cutting and fit it into this area here. Half this uh, patio done, and uh, taking a look at all these cuts that we've just done with the demo saw and everything else. Why don't you kind of explain a little bit of your rationale of how you like to cut in, what you like to do for uh, joints and things like that? Okay, basically, what you're trying to do is not to have a continuous run in your irregular flagstone as far as the joints are concerned. What you're trying to do is place the stones at various angles and mix it up with the big stone and the smaller stone. Anytime you have round joints like you see over here, Let's take a look. Or triangular shaped stones like this one here, it makes for an interesting pattern. 
as you noticed, we have big ones here, big ones here, and then a cluster of smaller ones. Now, when we continue this area here, I'll pick up with some bigger stones again to relieve the area where we have the small stones. So the good principle is to go big, small, and not to have continuous joints. That's exactly right, and fairly uniform. If you look at these joints, they are fairly uniform, from maybe a half inch to an inch at the most. Now, since homeowners have a tough, they may have a tougher time, they, you know, we've been doing it for so often. If they have bigger joints, is that something for them to worry about? No. If they are satisfied and they're happy basically with their layout, then go ahead and go with that. It'll be just as strong, and, and when we do the tucking in, they'll see how Absolutely. that works and stuff. Now, we've accumulated a lot of dust. Is that something that they should be worried about? That's something we'll do uh, this afternoon and evening. We'll take a hose and we'll wash this all off and clean off the light coating of dust. And then by doing that, then under the stone, when we go lay the cement, it'll be pretty clean underneath. Yes, and, and then also then... We'll, uh, we'll again use water when we put this, uh, when we lay the stone down, we'll put water under each stone to make sure it's relatively clean and then put the cement in. And that they'll see next week. Excellent.